All right, so this round we are on the draw, and this is definitely one of our better hands, one of our better draws. Um, certainly don't mulligan it. We have the, the two ley lines as our opening hand actions. Does they perform any opening hand actions? Uh, so we'll do that. We'll put both onto the battlefield to increase our devotion for this, this card, Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx. Uh, so that we can cast this one, uh, ideally, on turn three. So we perform our opening hand actions. We have two of them. And looks like this might be Jeskai. Blue white control. So just go ahead and run the knight out there. They could crack their Scalding Tarn in response. Um, and fail to find, and then we don't have the, uh, then we can't use the knight ability, but that's fine, because it's, it's, instead of getting a planes, it's as if we got strip mine, uh, and then we could still cast, play Nykthos and Elspeth next turn, um, because we drew the border post, and the border post, uh, put us on planes border post against their hollowed fountain scalding tarn, so that's why we did the, the knight first, because the knight will get us the planes to cast the Wayfarer. And if they crack the Scalding Tarn in response to only have one land, then the knight doesn't trigger. But that's fine, because it gives us the two devotion um, to give us seven total devotion to cast the Elspeth anyway. So that's why we made that line. They didn't do it. Then they path us, give us planes, path our other creature, give us another planes. So now we could still just cast El Elspeth next turn pretty easily. Uh, but now we have a lot of decisions. Instead, we're just going to secure the waste. So they cast Snapcaster on our end step, and then they crack their fetch. And in response, we just want to resolve the secure the waste, because I'm assuming that they have counter spells. And if they, uh, if they get an untapped white land and path their own Snapcaster here just to get a land, and then they Supreme Verdict, then we just untap, untap and jam Elspeth. So we're okay with any of these situations. We just want to get ahead here. So we play our border post, replay our land, get a bunch of mana. And we're gonna cast Elishnorn here because it's lethal if it resolves. And they have logic not, can't quite pay for it. So we just attack out with everyone. It's two hits lethal unless they block. So they have to block. So now it's a little short of lethal this turn. You can put them down to one. They play Snapcaster on Path to Exile, Path one of the tokens. And here is where I think I make a mistake. No, I guess I'll just cast Elspeth, whatever. And you're dead. <laughs> like, what are you going to do about four warriors and three soldiers and an Elspeth when you're at three. Well, uh, you could Verdict, and then I still have, I can still on the end step secure for three because I have border post and three planes. Uh, you could Detentions for the tokens, but you can only hit the warriors because these are warriors and soldiers, even though they kind of look the same, they're not quite. Um, yeah, so basically there's, there's no card in magic, I think, that would save them. Cryptic Command, maybe, to bounce or to tap the team. But yeah, they're basically not winning this this match at this point, or this game. So then for how we sideboard against Jeskai, so unlike the some of the previous rounds where we played against like Affinity and Humans, where Wrath of God was just our best card, uh, we don't really want that in this matchup uh, because they're not really flooding the board with creatures. They're trying to get ahead with spells and card draw and counter spells and snapcaster mages. So instead we want to attack the graveyard. So we brought in two rest in peace and one of our graph diggers cages um, to turn off basically their snapcaster mages. Rest in peace is a little better than cage because it also hinders uh, logic knot. Um, and then that the, because there's no real searching your library for creatures unlike uh, with cord something like that or collected company. Like the creatures aren't entering from their from their library. So the cage is just basically a cheaper rest in peace 
uh, without the upside of also hitting logic knot. Um, so we bring in basically three of those. A couple of tech edges, um, just because it's better than the cards we're bringing out. Uh, and we can take them off a color. If they're trying to cryptic command, we could take them off a third blue source or second white source. We could hit a colonnade if they have those. It's just more utility, allows us to not get mana screwed. And I brought in uh, the other two Nevermores. Um, depending on the situation, it can be uh, it can be good in various spots. Where if you're thinking, okay, their only way to to win here is with like a, a, a supreme verdict, then we name supreme verdict. Uh, it's just kind of you know good and decent spots in some spots. I took out the ley line of sanctities, even though kind of like in the uh, the match against affinity, where just having them in your opener is fine and it accelerates your your devotion. But if they don't really have cards that target you um, that you need to stop, it's still not really worth a card. So we're taking out the ley lines. We're taking out two of the path to exiles because we're still not quite sure what their win condition is. Um, some of them run uh, the Kiki Jiki Restoration Angel combo. We didn't see any walls and they didn't live long enough really to cast any angels, but also a path, you can path your own creature to get mana. If they bring in Staticaster for our tokens, we can path the Staticaster or the token they target, depending on the board. Uh, so then it would fizzle, like uh, it would protect the rest of our tokens for the attack. Uh, so I, th I think two path to exiles is fine. Uh, I bring uh, so I bring out the other two. I also took out the quarantine field um, because a lot of their I expect them to bring in cards like wear tear, given that we have ley line ley line border post border post on the battlefield. Uh, so I don't want to overload on that kind of thing, and they don't really have a lot of targets either. Because like Snapcaster Mage, uh, like we don't really want to put that under a quarantine field, you know, because it already did the most of its damage. So we'll take out the quarantine field, two paths, and four ley lines, bring in two Nevermore, two Tech Edge, two Rest in Peace, and one Cage. I believe that's what I did. If it's not what I did, it's close. And I, uh, okay, well, I kind of sped through this. But anyway, um, we're on the draw here, and we definitely keep this hand because we have uh, the border post into night hand. And we also have the Graph Digger's Cage to shut off the uh, Snapcaster Mages. And this is about the right number we want to draw. We brought in two Rest in Peace, one Cage. And we basically want to draw exactly one of those three each game because the second one is kind of redundant. And we just want to have one of those abilities active. So the hand looks pretty good. Uh, nothing I want to ship. Just play the Border Post. Not doing anything. Play the Knight. Get spell snared, okay. Because the knight would allow us to play the cage right afterwards. Now I play visions. All right, so let's go for the knight again. Yes. I'm going to play cage. And they play snapcaster in response because, well, why not? Not going to be getting any value out of it now. So the cage was good. And their ancestral vision is going down one. That was their turn one play. So now here, what we're about to do, uh, we start by playing the border post because we don't have a land drop. So we'll just get that out of the way first. Then we'll replay the land. So the border post was essentially free. Now we have four mana. And uh, I definitely want to cast Nevermore because we have an ancestral vision that's about to come off suspend next turn. So if we can Nevermore and name Ancestral Vision, they can't cast it when it comes off suspend. So they have to deal with the Nevermore right away. They have to either counter it, or they have to bounce it, or they have to destroy it. They have to do something to it, because on their turn, uh, they're not going to be drawing three cards if it resolves. So that's why we wanted to prioritize casting this this turn. So we attack first, hoping that they do something in combat. Uh, they don't. Now we just cast the Nevermore, and they countered it with Negate. All right, 
Well, at least we got that out of the way. Negate's going to counter secure or Nels Beth anyway, so I guess you just get to draw three cards. I did my best to try to stop it. Snapcaster Mage, hit for two, sure. Guess you're not blocking my first striker. Drew another Arrest in Peace, kind of redundant with the cage. Now we're on the plan of casting Secure the Waste. Uh, that's why I didn't um, like play the Rest in Peace or anything, because we have access to five mana. And if we draw a land, we can Elspeth. So this turn I felt was a good turn to secure. So they're down to eight life because they've been like fetching and shocking. We've been hitting them with the knight. So they're down to eight. We don't actually have to deal them that much damage. And if we can secure the waste for four, that's six points of attack. Like they're they're almost dead. And so that's the plan we're on. We don't need to play a redundant rest in peace. They play Geist of St. Traff. That's an interesting one. So now that we know they have Geist, uh, for game three, we would consider bringing in some number of Wrath of Gods because that's otherwise not a super easy to, creature to deal with. And the Angel can hit a Planeswalker. Uh, so that's actually a pretty good card against us. Um, but first, we, first there has to be a game three. So the opponent has to beat us. And it's going to be tough at this point. So end step, we secure. And I secure for the full amount um, because I, I don't want to like do anything else. I'm not trying to also path on end step or anything like that. I could have done it for one less, gotten three, and then pathed one of them so that I get the sixth land to guarantee that I could cast Elspeth this turn. But my thinking is if I do that, then I only have two tokens left. And like two tokens can't attack profitably into a Geist. So then I basically just have like two tokens and then attack with the Knight. Then I play Elspeth, make some tokens. And like Geist can put Elspeth down to one. And just like if the Elspeth, if something happens to the Elspeth, then I'm basically in a losing board position. And I don't want to do that at this point. Uh, I would rather just secure for the full amount and attack. Because if we attack out here, they block one and take five and go to three. And now how can they afford to attack with the Geist? They have to basically leave uh, both creatures back to not die from our lethal attack. See what I'm saying? So that's why I just secured for the full amount in that spot. Draw Nick though, so that's a good draw step. So we attack with everyone. They block a token, they go to three. Then we play rest in peace, trying to bait a counter, which is almost never going to happen in that spot. But it's also a kind of free free roll because we have the Nykthos. So we get the extra devotion, then we get the five mana off the Nykthos, tap for a sixth mana, and we cast the, uh, the Elspeth. And oh, disdainful stroke. That was a good one. All right, well, they're attacking. They have something. So we take eight, down to eight. Is this a cryptic? No. All right, what do you got? How can you withstand a five point attack here? Oh, Staticaster. All right, so Staticaster, if we let you block, you block the, the Knight of the White Orchid, then you shoot a warrior token and take zero. So if I let you block and you shoot the warrior, I could path the warrior that you target, so then you take two from the other warriors. Or I can path your Staticaster before blocks, you shoot a warrior so all the warriors die, but then you still take two from the knight and go to one. So I would rather deal with the Staticaster uh, and get you down to one, as opposed to um, not dealing with the Staticaster, getting you to one, but still having the tokens, because you could then just shoot the tokens next turn. Uh, so that's basically why I did that. I wanted to get rid of that Staticaster. Um, and also maybe try to bait a uh, counterspell there. Because if they have a, a counterspell of some kind um, for the Path to Exile, then we kill them with the Ballista. They don't. So we lose our creatures. And now, okay, do you want to go to one? It's kind of awkward because they're threatening lethal here. We 
go to one. All right, well, you have three cards in hand. Um, we Now, here, here's an interesting situation. Like, what counter spells do I play around? So with the Nekthos, I can get one, two, three, four, five. I have five devotion. So I can tap for five mana, six, seven. I can get seven mana. So I can play the Blista for one, two, or three. So the question is, which of those three numbers is correct? Well, there's pros and cons of each. If I if I Blista for one, uh, meaning two mana to make him a one one, I can still sacrifice for lethal, but uh, the opponent can spell snare the ballista, and we've already seen that they have spell snare because they spell snared our Knight of the White Orchid um, this game or last game. And if we do it for four or six mana, making it a two two or a three three, then they could disdainful stroke it, which we saw earlier this game. See the disdainful stroke. So do we play around spell snare, which up oh, there it is, the spell snare that they cast early in the game? Or the disdainful stroke that they cast already. So th this is kind of a, you know, pick which card to play around in this spot. Um, or if we do it for six, we could still pay for a logic knot if they, because they don't have a graveyard. So and they, well, they can't fetch either. So they logic knot for zero. Uh, they would. And, and here was my my decision. It's like, well, I haven't seen mana leak. But I know Mana Leak is a card you could play in this deck, and some Jeskai decks play it. Well, you can Mana Leak it uh, if we do it for six. So I don't want to do it for six. Uh, I can do it for four or two at this point, mana speaking. Uh, so if I do it for two, then you could Spell Snare it. If I do it for four, you can Disdainful Stroke it. But I'm not going to let you beat me with a Mana Leak. Uh, so that was the decision I, I did. And I went with, uh, I think, four mana, because uh, I thought that it was more reasonable they have multiple spell snares against us than Disdainful Strokes. Uh, and I was also thinking that if they have whatever number I... So uh, whatever number I do it for, they will... Um, if they don't have a counterspell, but they have something like a... Uh, uh, I don't know what else. I guess it's basically a counterspell because they don't have access to white mana here because they're at one, so they can't fetch into like Lightning Helix or something. Yeah, so it's basically do I want to play around? Uh, I'm definitely playing around Mana Leak by not pay, by not doing it for three counters. Um, but I'm playing around just picking to do Disdainful Stroke instead of uh, Spell Snare or the reverse. I'm playing around Spell Snare instead of Disdainful Stroke. So I do it for two counters, and yep, that's it. It was good. Okay, so that was, uh, yeah, that was uh, Jeskai midrange. So we've demonstrated an ability to uh, hang toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the best aggro decks in modern with uh, humans and affinity. And so far, we've demonstrated we can hang toe to toe with the the blue mid range um, sort of attrition decks in the form uh, in the format. So now let's see uh, how we're going to do against another strategy.